Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video on our own devices. I'm Jean Massier, and my totally unplanned photography-themed month comes to a close with a very neat vintage camera accessory. See, a little while ago, I was gifted a literal steamer trunk full of vintage camera equipment, and among the various doodads in that trunk was this, a Polaroid Model 440 photoelectric shutter unit. So this was introduced in the early 1960s and was designed to clip over the lens of early model Polaroid land cameras like this Model 95, the very first instant camera to hit the market. And if you want to learn more about this camera and the early days of Polaroid, please check out my video series on the subject, links in the description. So what this does is it replaces the camera's original shutter and then uses a photo cell to adjust the speed of the shutter according to ambient lighting conditions. And the specific way it does that is really quite neat and unexpected. So without further ado, let's jump right in and have a closer look at this. So the unit comes in a nice cardboard box with an instruction manual, a velvet storage pouch, a spare parts ordering form, and a little envelope of light seals, which are used to cover the gaps between the shutter unit and the lens housing on the Polaroid Land 95, 95A, 95B, 100, 150, 700, and 800, preventing stray light from leaking through. Now, the unit itself is designed to fit over nearly all pre-1962 Polaroid land cameras, with the exception of the Model 80, 80A, 110, and 110A, which are smaller than the more standard models. So before you can attach the flash unit, you first have to set the camera's aperture to EV, or exposure value 14, or setting number 5, as in this case, and the shutter mode knob to B for bulb. This causes the shutter to remain open so long as the shutter release lever remains depressed. You then attach the shutter unit by threading these levers on the right hand side behind the support arms on the camera, pushing the unit back against the lens, then flipping this latch lever to lock everything in place. Notice that when I do this, this little arm here pushes down the camera's shutter release lever, which, since the camera is set to B mode, keeps the camera's own shutter permanently open. And once the unit is in place, you then use the camera as per usual, only you use the shutter release lever on the unit itself rather than the camera's original shutter. Now, what this also does is it steps down the camera's aperture to f54, giving us a very deep depth of field. So, for example, if you adjust the zoom to 6 feet, the depth of field will extend from 3.5 feet out to infinity. And if you set this to 3.5 feet, then you can take pictures of subjects as close as 24 inches or 2 feet. However, one consequence of having such a small aperture is that this needs to be used with 3000 sensitivity Polaroid black and white film. Now, a couple other features worth pointing out here, for example, the back of this rounded feature on the right, we have a little window. And if I cover and uncover the photo cell, you will see a little white flag move in and out of sight, indicating that the ambient light is too dim to take a photo. On the top, we also have a knob for adjusting the darkness of the photo, which goes from lighten to darken to glare scene, which is used for extremely bright subjects like sunlit snow or sand. And finally, if you are photographing an extremely high contrast scene, such as a dark object against a bright sky or a pale object against a dark background, the photo cell will likely detect the brightness of the background, producing an image that is too light or too dark. To correct this, this unit has a feature where if you pull the shutter release down just past this little ridge on the case, it will click and lock off the photo cell. You can then push a little bit further and the shutter will trip. And so how you would use this is that you would come up very close to your subject and then push the lever down until it clicked. You would then back away, frame your shot as per usual, and push the lever the rest of the way. And this will expose the photo according to the light levels coming from the subject rather than the background. So, so far, so simple. But like I said, the way that this actually works on the inside is really quite clever and unexpected. So let's actually take this apart and have a closer look. So to take this apart, we need to peel back the rear label to expose these four slot head screws. And once those are removed, this rear panel comes off to expose the latching and shutter bypass mechanisms, which operate like this. We then undo these three Phillips head screws, and the inner panel comes off to reveal the internal components. Now, you'll notice that this has no batteries. All the power to run the unit is generated directly by the photocell. You can also see the mechanical shutter mechanism, which is operated by the shutter release lever as so. 
If you pull the shutter release past the trip lever line, you will see this latch engage and hold the mechanism in place until you push the lever the rest of the way, triggering the shutter mechanism. Now at this point, you're probably wondering how such a small amount of power coming from the photocell manages to control such a heavy spring-loaded mechanism. Well, that is the truly ingenious part. You see, the photocell is connected to the coils of this galvanometer, which as you can see swivels back and forth as I cover and uncover the photocell. This galvanometer is connected to the low light indicator flag, as well as this curved plate with this oddly shaped slot cut at it. This is actually a variable geometry orifice and sits over the inlet to these rubber bellows connected to the shutter mechanism, which control the speed at which the shutter closes. So if the ambient light is bright, the galvanometer swings the orifice plate towards its wider end, the airflow to the bellows is less restricted, and the shutter closes faster. If the ambient light is dim, the orifice plate remains at its narrower end, the flow to the bellows is more restricted, and the shutter closes more slowly. So I find that really, really cool. I don't think I've ever seen this type of hybrid photoelectric pneumatic mechanical system before, but it seems to work well. It seems to be fairly reliable. And this is exactly the type of out-of-the-box engineering that I love covering on this channel. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Sorry I haven't been that active this past month. I've been busy with a whole bunch of other projects, including my first co-hosted video with Today I Found Out channel runner David Hiskey, which I will link in the description. Had a lot of fun doing that. Hopefully next month I'll be able to start putting out videos at a more regular pace. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.